TLA versus PETG. You know the filaments, but do you know why or when to use them? Let's find out. First up is PLA or polylactic acid filament. PLA is the lightweight in this battle, and the beginning recommended nozzle temp is a relatively low 190 degrees Celsius. And that 190 degrees Celsius is for melting and extruding from a 3D printer's hot end, which means it's getting pretty soft long before it reaches that temp. Also, for those of us in America, that 190 degrees Celsius is equivalent to about 374 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, PLA usually prints pretty clean with little to no problem, and that's why most beginners will go through a lot of PLA. And it's good for running test prints, making toys, office gadgets, and even small inside-the-house repairs. Even this massive LEGO Stormtrooper that I printed out for my Star Wars video a while back, well, he's made completely out of PLA. Haha. Uh -huh. Well, PLA does have a good bit of strength if it's printed right and you don't drop it. Look at these toy soldiers! They'll break the second I step on them! It's also fairly porous, so beware of anything food-related. But the biggest problem for PLA? Heat. That low melting point can come back and bite you in a bad way if you're not careful. So it's going to be interesting to see how it stacks up against the competitor. Well, next up is PETG, or polyethylene terephthalate glycol. Please don't ask me to say it again. PETG's kind of the middleweight in this matchup, with a much higher recommended nozzle temp to begin with, coming in about 220 degrees Celsius. Now, PETG's a bit of a diva when it comes to printing, though. An enclosure is pretty much a necessity to keep those temps pretty constant, and barring that, you're going to need a nice warm room with no breeze. Talk about pampering. Well, you'll find that PETG's great for toys that are meant to take a beating, a light beating, and it can stand up to even more DIY and home repair needs. It's even possible for you to use PETG for outside prints and possibly even some automotive fixes and upgrades. But if you've ever said, yeah, but it's a dry heat, well, just be careful with everything. Everybody says it's a very dry heat, but that doesn't mean it isn't unbearably hot. All right, so our strength and heat testing is going to be pretty simple and completely unscientific. These test prints were all printed out on the Bamboo P1S and using all default settings with a 0.2 millimeter line height, two walls, and 15% grid infill. The only difference was the settings I used for the blue PLA as opposed to the PETG in white. All right, so like I said, very unscientific for the strength test, but we're gonna pit them against each other. And I have these two blocks right here, both made out of PLA and uh, look pretty good. Let's just, uh, let's give it a go, see what I can do here. So let's try this and not too bad. It broke completely through and it was pretty easy to do. Let's see how PETG stands up. All right, here we go. Now, interestingly, PETG felt like it bent a good bit more, but you can see the stringing that came across. So it tried to hold together. Had I tried to break it like that, it obviously would have been a lot harder. Let's give it one more go. PLA. All right. So that wasn't too bad. And PETG. Uh, okay, that was definitely harder to do than the, either one of the PLAs. I felt some good flex going on in there, and I uh, think that gives us enough to go on for the judges. We'll see how they held up in the heat. Well, the heat tests weren't easy for anybody, including me. <laughs> Outside temps here have been in the upper middle 90s, somewhere around there, but the dashboard of my car shows it's gotten as high as 170 degrees Fahrenheit. And both of these test blocks were left to plank in the sun for about six days straight. Also, I do know that blue and white colors have a slight difference in reflection and refraction and things like that. But, you know, we're going for more of a science adjacent thing here. Science. The first 30 minutes really told the tale. And PLA was the first to make a move. It lifted up significantly, but then it just sort of gave up completely. PETG, though, gave a great showing for a number of days, even with just a little bit of slight movement toward the end. After all of that, nothing was really changing for a while, so 
we decided to bring in some alternate test blocks and uh, check those out. We have three different test blocks in both materials, one millimeter, two millimeter, and five millimeter. Once again, PLA moved first and left a lot to be desired in the heat and really did fold quickly and easily. Pet G didn't come away unscathed though, but it really did hold its own. Well, when it comes to a battle of strength and heat resistance, who do you think came out on top? Well, the judges have ruled, and I have to say, this was pretty much a clean sweep in this test at least. There are hundreds of filament colors and types for nearly every material that we can all print with. And sometimes it won't matter if your print has the qualities of PETG or more. Who knows, you may want to print so easier to heat up like PLA. Understanding the properties and uses though of each one of these filaments, well, it takes time. But for the few filaments that you and I may print with on a daily basis, it's absolutely worth learning them. If you want more info like this, please subscribe and check out this video. And let's continue to learn, create, and amaze.